issues we've had and uh, networking problems, it looks like everything's been restored. I managed to actually pull some power through from our desk you know, finally. to the APG side. So everything is calm, everything seems to be stable, I'm hoping, at the least. <laughs> and uh, when APG begin to lose and their power randomly goes off, that wasn't my foot. Oh. <laughs> anyway, yeah, let's uh, let's get back into this. I mean, it's been a while, it's been a bit of a break, but now we're finally getting back into it. Hopefully we can get a string of games together now, uh, one after the other. Uh, APG versus DC. Yeah, good game. That's a very, very good game. Two extremely one. strong teams. I don't think there's a really a clear-cut winner in this. This is your clear definition of individual skill and up-and-coming talent versus teamwork, synergy, uh, communication. So it'll be interesting to see between the two factors which one actually prevails. And uh, I, for one, I'm going to put my neck out there and I'm going to say APG are going to take this in a 2-1 fashion. Um, look, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a full-on DC supporter. Yeah. Well, partly DC supporter. I support some of the other teams as well. Um, I think, you know, a strong lineup with Inson back. Um, old player from the DC side, I think they're just trying to find their feet, they will become a powerhouse. I, I, I've just got this feeling like that they're really going to do it. Okay. Um, the thing though is that we're going to have to we're going to have to analyze this game very carefully. Yeah. We're going to have to see the strong points of APG and, and DC. So the maps that I did get was Inferno uh, and Cash. Uh, there's three maps that I get. Like, uh, okay. I didn't get the, the all of them. Uh, Inferno, Cash, and Dust Two. Okay, wow. There we go. So classic maps. Those those have been voted already. I think Inferno, great. We're going to see it. I've been looking forward to see that seeing that map. Uh, Cash, love that map. Very well balanced map, in my opinion. I think it can sway either side. Definitely. Um, and then Dust Two, good old favorite. It's like the nuke. Yeah. You know? awesome. uh, well, Dust Two, my opinion, that's that's your aim. That's your aim map. That's where uh, we just see we just seen APG come up a 16-10 win against Taco on that map. Um, they played well. Um, chatting a little bit about APG, uh, a few line changes here and there. They had Ravs in at one stage, uh, and now they've got uh, uh, Panda, Domster, Devoid, MBR, and Turtle, uh, and it's it's. It's a very strong lineup, but we haven't seen them produce the results that they would like to produce yet. They've yeah, well, been look. potential, they've had the potential, and they've been edging it, but they haven't quite got there just yet. And this is their platform to prove themselves. I think this land is a great opportunity for APG to get their name out there. Well, let's quickly look, talk about the, the previous game that finally finished, the round one game, because yeah. there's a couple of round one games. There's actually still one going on at the moment, which is the YNSD. Yeah. Uh, on the pass. Why in this piece? On you shall pass. They still on their first round yeah. because of technical difficulties. These guys, APG, played against Tackle Rain. Tackle Gaming actually gave them a good game. They did, indeed. Yeah. Wasn't too bad. Um, but finally, uh, APG beat them there. Yeah. So now we're finally going to be covering uh, a round two match that we've been waiting for, the DC APG game. Yeah. And obviously, going on a little bit later, if DC pull through. And when they match, we'll hopefully cover a DC Bravada El Clasico. That would be a classic. Eh? That would be and, a classic. And uh, uh, this time, we're not going to be waiting two hours. Yeah. And I'm going to be honest about it. This took a little bit longer than expected, but I think the next game should happen in about 25 minutes or so. Yeah. Power seems to be stable now. Network seems to be fine. It has been a little bit of an issue since, since the get-go. But um, a lot of effort has been put in from the NAV TV team. Uh, this is Mr. Trigger there, one of the yeah. casters actually Welcome just uh, giving a the thumbs up there. Uh, our Call of Duty casters. If you guys want to watch some Call of Duty, they are casting a little bit later on twitch.tv uh, slash navgamingtv. Uh, that's a partner channel. You can choose the, um, the quality settings there to, to watch some of the great card games that are taking place here as well. Because this is a Call of Duty Advanced Warfare and CSGO yeah. tournament. Yeah. Um, but just going back quickly, to the conversation we had about the DC APG. Um, I think just a matter of time, it's really just a matter of time that DC are going to get on their feet again mm. and they're going to start producing I phenomenal yeah. results. No, I completely agree with you. Uh, and it's all of that, it's like a ticking time bomb, really. But when is it going to happen? That's what everyone's waiting for. Is it this land? Is it this land? Is it this land? And it, it keeps that, that suspense is there. But 
uh, it, it's definitely it's going to happen. It's just a matter of when. Yeah. And uh, like this land, I said for APG is a great opportunity for them, as well as it is a great opportunity for DC with this new lineup with Ensign coming in for Neffen, who's now made his way to Energy, which we spoke about a little bit earlier. Interesting um, change. Yeah. yeah. Um, last time these two teams did meet on Inferno, uh, it went to in favour of DC in 16-6. Uh, so that was quite quite a walkover or. 66 or something along that scoreline, but it was it was a very good game for DC and not too closely contested at all. So um, I, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw DC win again. Of course, that goes back to the teamwork, and Inferno is such a team teamwork based map. Oh yes, uh, definitely. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if we did see DC win Inferno once again. But you said Cash and Cash and does two with the next two maps, and uh, definitely in my books that 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 favours the APG lineup. Okay, well I I like your theory. It is actually pretty solid. Um, however, I think experience is a little bit more on DC side in this one. However, aiming not being the greatest, I mean, Vent is taking them. Uh, I think Vent took them apart the other uh, yeah. competition. They beat them 2 1. Yeah. Yeah. So it was close so, to be tested, but. Two. But uh, I don't know, man. I've just got this really, really funny feeling about DC. Eh? Damage control. It's time for them to wake up and smell the roses yeah, and no, start to produce results. I and mean, if, that, they, really if the, they don't do it, it's, it's going to come to a time when they'll become stale almost and people yeah. will stop expecting results from them. So they really, for, for themselves and for everybody who supports them, they need to start producing results. So um, if you just look at the names in it, you've got Hellhound, Explicit, Gambit, Style. Those names are big names, and yeah. they're all extremely, extremely talented individuals. So uh, I, I think it's really important for them to start winning these games. And like we've spoken about already, this land is the perfect platform for them to do some damage, to make a top three. Um, I, obviously, it's going to... Uh, uh, top three, that's such a difficult thing. Talk about top three a little bit. What, if you had to throw some names out there for top three, I mean, <laughs> with all the teams, yeah, what are you, what are you thinking? Um, please, difficult question. What do you think? Okay, what do I think? Um, I think Ventus is going to win. I think Ventus are going to beat Provado in the final, so I think Provado will come second. Okay. And I wouldn't be surprised to see uh, Energy placing third, and most likely APG or VNR in that fourth position. Yeah. I think that will be a pretty closely contested okay. game. So. Uh, that's what I'm feeling at the moment. Um, well, look, Vienna is already in the losers bracket. They are. Uh, they lost to Ian, but that's a difficult game. It's against Energy. Yeah. They did quite well on the first map, but second map fell to the wayside for them. Um, well, look. Um, okay. Personal opinion: Provada number one, Energy yeah. number two. In it. Okay. Ventus number three, DC number four. Okay. That's my line. DC number four. Yeah. I didn't even put DC in my top four, huh? I didn't. So the reason why I'm putting DC as number four, okay, because look, I haven't seen them play. Yeah, I've got a strong feeling they are going to produce good results. They might actually go. They might actually. I mean, there's a slight chance they might actually beat Bravado. Slight yeah. chance. No, there is. I haven't beaten Bravado in a very long time. However, it, 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 it all depends on the day. Well, talking about beating Bravado, the last notable time, okay, energy, energy with Elusive and Goals did beat Bravado in that online DGL game. They beat them 2-0. Um, but before that, I can't think of a time that Bravado lost. Yeah. They've just been so dominant in every single performance, time and time again. They've been producing the results very consistent, and um, I, I think it's great. And uh, to have a team like that represent South Africa. Is, is, is a very, very good thing to have for, our, for our sake. Definitely, that's why I'm ranking them first. Um, they are a team that's pretty much, look, they have a slight chance, but Bravado is the team to beat, man. It's, so, it's, yeah. it's for them to lose. Yeah, exactly. I completely agree with you. But you say <coughs> DC has a slight chance of beating Bravado, but you still put Ventus ahead of DC in your top four. In fact, in your well, top three. <laughs> you see, the, 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 the reason why I'm putting Ventus into my top three is there's a most likely chance that they will play up against Energy Sports. Okay. Okay. And you think Energy will just out with them? No. Energy a second. You see, the thing is, I put it. Look, <laughs> you can't take me on about it. No, no, no. I'm not taking you on. Just a, uh, it's a brain. difficult one. Yeah. The thing is that I do see uh, Aventus DC clash in the losers bracket. Okay. And I do see. The losers bracket semi-final, not, not the losers bracket final, 
actually comprise of um, Aventus DC game. Yeah. And so basically, the losers back in bracket final could have Ventus in it. You know what I mean? Yeah, I understand. If Bravado goes all the way straight through, Ventus will meet energy in the losers bracket final. Yeah, consolidation final. And that's where energy will most likely take. Okay. So, kind of like a. It's a hard prediction to call. It, it really is. Yeah. Uh, I, I do personally think that because Energy and Ventus have got X players of each team uh, within them, mm. they kind of know each other. Yeah. They kind of know each other. Strat well, players, etc. Well, et yeah, yeah. And you don't just learn a whole new sheet of strats within in a, what, a month or however long it's been. Three yeah, weeks. Exactly. So it's it's a bit of a. Yeah, that's a hot call, but that that's going to be my final thought. Okay, no, fair enough. Uh, if you look at this APG versus DC game that we've got here, and you yep. look at the APG lineup, the first name that comes to your mind is Domster and Devoid. Now, Devoid goes back to Call of Duty days. He was his brothers with uh, Bananas, who we saw playing not too long ago. Um, and uh oh look they're all on the server so yeah. it looks like we can actually go in game uh that's uh, good to see but uh, sorry carry on sorry just going I, back I to my point there i was just saying how, how I, I, devoid is an extremely strong fragger he's got great aim great game sense good clutch sense and does, i think yeah. devoid will be the player to watch in this apg versus dc game and um it'll be really really interesting to see who begins ct on this map because last time D started on CT and they got a 12-3 half out. Uh, so it'll, it'll be interesting to see if he can replicate the performance that we saw not too long ago or if APG are going to turn the tables and take this, uh, take, take this map. Well look, um, so th th there's one player in APG that actually want, I want to keep a close eye on yeah. and that's Sandpro Turtle. Yeah. Sandpro Turtle really uh, is more of a, how do I say, um, a player that really performs on land, he yeah. did phenomenally well at DGC. If he's got any sort of kind of, if he's got that like going for him, then you know we, we might see this here. But like as we as, as we actually going right into the game here, it, it does seem to me that uh, DC is kicking it off at as the T side. Yeah. And we have got APG as CTs. You want to take it away? Yeah. Well, that's the opposite to what we had the last time we saw these two teams going up against each other on Inferno. Um, and it looks like quite a standard play from DC at the moment, kind of edging towards that A site. We see them in apps and just around middle, second middle at the moment, where there waits three APG players. There is a kit on the side of APG. That kit belongs to Domster, which is on the B site at the moment. So he's going to have to make a rotation over. And while wow, Turtle can find a shot, he does get a bit of information. And information is so important on this map because the rotations are really easy from site to site as a terrorist. And uh, no rotations coming out from APG as the moment, and here comes the push from DC. They decide to push up to the left hand side of middle. Gambit doing really well, he gets one of the panda, and now APG in a, a, a quite a difficult position. There is Turtle in pit, he finds himself one. Can he get any No, he can't, but MBR gets one. Gambit jumping out of apps, he finds an out from Hellhound getting one on the opposite side of the map. MBR instantly replying, and it's a two versus two now. Are they able to get the bomb down? Oh, Gambit finds MBR in the side, and the void all the way in Banana is gonna have to come around and retake the site without a kit. Gambit finding himself with 3k this round, he had a really really strong round and uh, this pistol round going to DC on the T side of Inferno, let me not speak too soon as you see the Void coming around the corner, he does get Hellhound with Gambit down to 43 HP and there's only 15 HP left on Hellhound, he only needs to find one shot onto him, he doesn't have a kit so he's gonna have to try and fake it out or stick it. Looking quite interesting here, it looks like he wants to stick the defuse. Ill is Hellhound gonna come around the corner and check it, he's actually not checking, he's gonna have to get to the defuse. Wow, that was so close. Hellhound at the last second there, coming around the corner. Great game sense there from Hellhound, not rushing it, because as soon as he rushes it, Devoid lets go of the fuse and he gets the frag. So great great game sense there from Hellhound, and we see Instant now picking up an AK-47. Great round from DC. No, it's a good round from DC there. However, just a little bit risky, because uh, right on the end there, the, the DC player, of course, had very low HP. The problem I saw from APG there was the rotation. Devoid stuck it out at B, although he knew Bomb was at A. So to me, I don't I don't know, man. Like in in that sort of case, you have to kind of keep up with with with, with your team yeah. and and do the rotation as quick as possible. When he's there to support his teammates, then at least you know there's a level of resistance 
and a better chance of actually winning the round. Now I'm looking at the situation here. Very interesting buy from damage control. One AK. Good little pip pop off here from Sampa Turtle with that CZ75. And here we go. DC now moving the bomb into the woods. The B side not working out for them at the moment. As we can see, the P250 in action. Dom's to take out Haaland there, of course. Explicit fighting back with a double kill. And he's finally taking side. Rotations are slow from APG. We'll play here from Pizzetto. Another one there, explicit going down. So it's a two on two right now. Let's see who can take it. Hard play here from damage control. Style coming in from the construction area. The change. The one on one. Ensign. He's got the right rifle. He's got the right gun. I like the way that he played there. He wasn't too aggressive like with, with what DC did with the MP7. Uh, yes. Talents just hung, hung back. He yeah. was the defender the of the bomb. There. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It was good. Yeah. And uh, APG. Uh, of course, saving in this third round now, considering they lost the pistol, but they did well. They found four frags on that on that uh, that semi eco. They had a few CZs and stuff, uh, which are strong right guns. But taking a look at the buy from DC, they've got five rifles on the board now. Quite interesting to see them investing so much. Panda finding one on the style, but Hellhound getting another. And wow, he actually gets dropped down to 15 HP. If APG can get some of those rifles, they'll be in a great position. Turtle gets one. Can Gambit stop them here? And he does, stopping them in their tracks. He finds himself at 2k. And it is all down to Panda with that 5.7 who's on that A site at the moment. And he's going to try. He's actually pushing up the stairs. He just misses the timing there to find the frag. And uh, trying to see if he can catch somebody as they pass. And got a nice little position here. He might be able to catch Gambit here. While he's looking the opposite way, but uh, he does go down and now comes out the first buy round. And this first buy round is so, so important for APG. Now, of course, um, I 100% I agree with you, Deb. The, ho the whole thing there would have been a little bit more beneficial for APG if they took maybe one or two extra kills there. Yeah. Kind of like hit the finances of DC a little bit there. However, we're seeing a full M4 versus a full MK battle. The classic kind of uh, rifle T showdown, CT, really. That's exactly it. I mean... Yeah. To be honest, uh, it's, gonna, it's, it's gonna be quite tricky. We see DC moving up into the second mid position there, close to A. Kind of to, it's kind of a little bit of a touch and go right now. They just wanna see if they can snoop around, maybe take a pick or two and then breach site. But um, kind of, uh, I'm, I'm kind of wary of the players in B side specifically. Specifically Hellhound, he's just kind of parking back right now. He's not taking like any sort of aggressive play stance. Uh, it could be an indication that there might be a possible late rotation to be. Yeah. We'll have to keep an eye on, on that at the moment. Something that uh, APG are doing at the moment, we see that Panda is positioned in Darkroom at the moment, and uh, I, I'm not sure I'm such a big fan of this. Okay, I lie, he's not. He's on, the, he's on boost. Sorry about that, okay. Um, he's actually in a really great position to shut down this push as it comes through. He does wait for the first flash, and now he's going to see the smokes raining over. And are oh, we going to see the rotations come out here from APG this time? There is no fakes from DC. Panda in the position on the roof. He finds one, and he's able to get out scot free. Now Gambit in apps are oh, just missing Panda because of the wall of smoke there. And uh, 28 seconds left on the clock. DC are going to have to make a move. Explicit does get one up to Panda. Hellhound chiming in as well as Gambit. And this leaves it all down to Turtle on the side. Once again, Devoid on the B side, only going through Banana now. Can Turtle stop the plant? No, he can't. Bomb goes down. Two versus three, and they know where Turtle is. But take a look at the void with the flank. He finds himself one. Now two versus two. Turtle getting some shots down to Gambit, taking him down to 91 HP. And uh, yeah, this is a difficult retake here for APG. Devoid going straight through. He fakes up the fuse, but there's a player in apps who's going to shut it down very easily. Although Turtle finds one, and he knows where the last is. Is he going to be able to fake this out? Or he actually does. Okay, so now the grenade going out. He does know where he is. The grenade's going to do some damage, but not enough. And. Uh, Great play there from clever. Gambit. Great, great play there from Very Gambit. clever play. Definitely. I mean, they kind of used one of the DC plays inside to kind of cause a little bit of a, um, how do I say, like a, a decoy. Distraction kind of thing. Yeah, no, he was more of a decoy yeah. player than actually Gambit. Gambit, you know, being a good fragger and all, sitting in their apartments, playing it quiet, going out quickly for the pick, knowing he's in a good position. Yeah. So right now, damage control in a good, really good position, right? Four rounds up. Forcing the eco again on APG, so it's going to be difficult for APG. We might see a little bit of a box play here on this mid side. We'll see them push down quite hard. Oh. On the right hand side, let's see what happens. Here we go, they're coming in all over the place. Oh my word, two down. And a nice little play here from APG. This is what they need, the momentum. However, DC are fast on the run. They're trying to get into the A side now, and APG is hot on their heels. Nice little play here from Explicit. Getting the smokes down. Ensign there with the support from 
the ditch site. It gets taken down there by Amber Zede. Now two versus two. Uh, Gambit doing well, Explicit doing well as well. So DC, as although they lost the, the players there, um, well done to them for bringing it back. It shouldn't have gotten that close, but well done for them yeah. bringing it back. And that's the experience there. They knew, okay, we've got to rush the A site. There's no one on the A site. Got on the A site, got the bomb down, and held the site. It's a hit so, and run, basically. Yeah, well played to them. And take a look at Gambit. He's 10 and 2 at the moment. He's just going, he's going nuts right now, enjoying this game. And uh, if APG do not win this round, they're in an extremely difficult position. Yeah, look, I mean, we have to we have to consider the fact that uh, DC have created a very solid foundation for themselves now in this first map. Um, in the first half at, at that. Five rounds up as T-side. I mean, what more can you ask for? You're already happy with that. If, if the halftime score is 10-5, maybe you're not happy, but you're not upset. Yeah. So if they are to lose 10 rounds from here, I still think they're in a, a very strong position. And the thing with Inferno, it is definitely more biased towards the CT side. Yeah, extremely. So yeah. most teams like CT side here. Where the uh, APG are struggling a little bit. Yeah, and I've seen DC play a, a, a great CT side, as I spoke about last time. They got 12 rounds in a row. Lost Pistol, lost the first three, and then brought back the next 12 rounds in a row. So uh, uh, I, I, I think APG say. need to win the next 10 or at least 9 rounds to make it a 9 6 half. Yeah, that's something with, with, with DC that's kind of haunted board, them for quite some time. They always tend to lose the pistol rounds. But here we go, a little <laughs> bit of breach play. Exchanges on the mid side here. Right side A, breach now from damage control. No, they're going left. They catch the guy here at the arch. Alan gets the first pick on PR. Slowly but shooting towards the A side. They're looping around, but look oh, at this. The point coming in, taking down two. He's going to try and go for, for another one. He's got the support from Domster. Oh, there we go. In the head, style goes down, and this should... A nice little retake here for the APG side. Clean cut, very well done. Yeah. Just an interesting one though, Devoid just kind of bolting into the library instead of supporting Domster. I'm not too sure if that was a may maybe a little bit of miscommunication. Yeah, I think so. Maybe he heard the player in library and he thought it was an enemy, he turned out to be his teammate and then they started walking into each other. But uh, APG won that bout round, that's their first bout round. And have a look at the economy on DC. Even though they won five rounds in a row, they were losing a lot of players. And so now their economy, if they lose this round, they're on an epoch. Exactly. I mean, this is, this is the dangerous thing with, play, with losing a lot of players in winning rounds, or when you're winning rounds. Yeah, having said that, APG, if they lose this, they've lost their round loss bonus. And uh, they won't be able to put up a buy for probably a double save. Yeah. So a really important round for APG as well as DC. But whichever team wins this is going to be in a much more superior position. And we see Hellhound finding two great frags that opens up the b side but have a look where the bomb is the bomb is nowhere near the sites it's on the opposite side of the map really towards that team spawn and the player which is instant gonna have to come back and rotate and grab it explicit playing the sneaky position there he finds a frag onto panda and uh, this is gonna be a two versus four retake and i just said apg can't lose this round and hellhound had different uh, different ideas in his mind and he of course yeah of course yeah well the thing is hellhound hasn't been playing that well with uh, with these weapons as what he used to used to be the surgeon, really, just yeah. deadly accurate with the yeah. AK-47. He's, he's lost that a little bit. So, like I've seen in the past, like if he kind of regains that momentum or regains that type of uh, um, form, guys like Bravada, Energy, Ventus, any team at, at that needs to be very, very careful. Yeah, definitely. But we'll have to wait and see. I mean, right now, good position for DC again. Going to pick up the sixth round here, which is phenomenal. Well, it's great. It's it's awesome. Yeah. And then just quickly having a look at um, uh, the scores at the moment. Seven uh, seven from five from Tampa Turtle, player that I mentioned that uh, will feature or could feature in this match. Yeah. And uh, well, looks like they actually going to force a buyout here, uh, which is quite interesting to see. Uh, they don't have many rounds to play with there. They're on the CT side and they need to make something happen. They actually get a yeah. decent buyout in the end. So, uh, well, look, APG we, need to get momentum. That's, that's the, the bottom thing. line. Exactly. At this moment in time, I think what's happening is that they're, they're sitting in predictable spots. They're coming from predictable locations. If you start to do that as a CT-based side, you're not going to get anywhere. You're not going to win your maps. You, unfortunately, it's, it's, it's an unfortunate truth, basically. Yeah. So right now, just having a look at the positioning, APG playing three in the A side and two in B, as expected from, from both sides. Um, 
No, I, I think looking at uh, a couple of the players, for instance, um, was it NBA or Panazida? No, Panazida. Playing in apartments. Very, very risky thing to do. As soon as DC start to kind of get on top of you and play very aggressive, yeah. um, it is time to go on the defense. Complete defense. You know, play from graveyard. Play, play, play from ditch. We see DC prepping now for a B-side push. Let's see how this one's going to work out here. How long gets the frag? Nice little. Ooh, nicely played here from APG. Managing to trade three for two. So two on three right now, favorable for APG. Let's see what they can do. Is in the B side, but here we go. Dobster playing so well there with the FAMAS. Picks up a trip kill. Yeah, that was really nicely played there by Dobster. Hold his nerve, hit at the back of the side, waited for the perfect opportunity. And uh, that was a great play there by Dom. He held down that side by himself and um, really nicely done. And now. APG need to feed off of that momentum. They really need yep. to start stringing rounds together. If they don't make this an 8-7 half, uh, I, I don't see them taking this map because DC have got a really strong CT side. And um, we see DC's economy, even though they're 6-2 up, uh, they, they've got a really shoddy buy on at the moment. And uh, looks like it's going to be a five-man execute on this B side. Smokes and flashes are going to rain down. Dom is in a perfect position to shut the side. He gets smoked and flashed off. He's not able to do any damage. Devoid at the back of the site now. Are they going to affect him to be here? Yes, they are. But Devoid finds two. And uh, Hell on an explicit actually bringing it back. And that's the side open now. And it's two rifles. Beautiful spans with a smoke eye by style. Hell on getting aggressive. He finds himself one. Is he going to get a second? Of course oh, yes. he is. And uh, <laughs> three versus one. Turtle on the opposite side of the map now. Where's the uh, rotation? That's that's what I'm asking now. That's a great, that's Where a great is question. Where's the rotation? No. Why is it sitting in A side? I mean, DC play very straight strats. They don't really like faking. to. They haven't been faking so they, much. They, so they don't like to fake. To a be honest, APG have got no reason to be holding a man back on sight. Remember, damage control plays with an aim and point kind of strat. They they they, they play their strats according to their aiming, their strengths. Guys like Halhan, guys like Gambit, guys like Style even as such using the AWP they use that to their advantage going with straight breach strats I mean I'm talking about 99.9% .9 of the time yeah so if APG don't learn that or have have not learned that in the last let's say three months they're doing something wrong yeah definitely it's simple as that and uh, APG again lost their round loss bonus and take a look at the they've got the AK that they saved and then pretty much a full eco from there on in so um, this is going to give potentially, theoretically, I say that because in South African gaming you can never count out an eco round, but uh, this should give DC an 8th round. And uh, that's already uh, a remarkable T side half on Inferno. It's a great one, to be honest. Yeah. We'll have uh, to wait and see what happens now. We've got one guy up on the B side here. It's most likely Hellhound that's just kind of peeking it out there, waiting for any aggression from APG, knowing that they're on the safe. And is it in a good position? It's taken down though. And here we go. Style picks up one with the M4A1S. Yeah, we see DC get the frags and going, well, trying to push straight into to A. I mean, it's a straightforward strat that they're playing. And APG have nothing to counter at the moment. Yeah, not even able to find any frags or pick up any rifles. And Hellhunt getting the better of Dom this round because he knew that to avoid flanks, but this time it happened to be Dom. And uh, a bit of team damage coming in there from style, but nothing too detrimental. And uh, yeah, APG obviously on an eco, not too much to speak of, but they're really, really struggling. And I, I think that they need to start being more confident in the information that they're being fed. So yeah. when a team calls it to be, get the rotations out because they're hanging back. They're not, they're not confident in the information. And uh, another thing I'd like to see APG, APG do is. DC are loving this B-side at the moment, so get that aggressive smoke at the bottom of Banana. Control Banana, don't give DC the, the, the map control in Banana. So yeah. I'd like to see APG getting control of Banana and keeping, not giving DC... DC are basically getting the entire apps, middle and Banana, and they can go wherever they like from there. So I'd like to see some more map presence from APG going into the rest of this half. Well look, um, what APG needs to do, right, is... They need to rotate quick. Yeah. They need to retake quick. Yeah. That's as simple as that. DC is playing the front foot game. And it's and I'm stating the obvious. As we can see now, APG defending off quite well, taking down two picks. There's style explicit on the game. We see Turtle also picking up one. Gambit also gone. So it's only Hellhound and Incent left right now. Incent, we need to pick off Hellhound with one more. 
the Alan needs to be careful of the Void now. The Void just lurking around, pops him down. So here we go, some good defensive play here from APG. However, um, Bomb has been dropped. Yeah. That's the trick here. They well, just I need mean, to keep an eye on it. APG made that round look so easy. They did. They made that round look so easy, and uh, <laughs> I, I don't know where that came from, but they need to do that. They need to win the next four rounds in a row. If, if DC get any more rounds, that's... <laughs> It's, it's it's devastating for APG. Yeah, and, and and like I said earlier, you can see Halan and Gambit on the tours. They are the top fraggers of the team. And if you take them out early, it, it, it causes a lot of problems with damage control. Yeah. You just need to know where they kind of, how they come in. And of course, uh, we, see, we see that uh, Stars pick up, or picked up an AWP. So I'm going to be very interested to see what he's going to do with it. Over to him. Looks like he is just popping the mid side at the moment, waiting for APG to peak. Uh, to peak. Um, it's a buy run now on, on both ends. MBR quite low in the HP as well, so he needs to be quite careful on how to address any sort of DC pushes. Be a little bit more defensive in a non predictable area. That's the only way that you're going to catch DC. Yeah. And uh, what, what's, what, what's so important here is APG. Can't peek here because that DC, that that off on DC side just gives them so much power over APG. Who, okay, I think they have expected it now because MBR was tagged down to 25 HP. But this B hold is going to have to be great shot from DC, uh, from APG rather. The aggression coming out from Gambit in apps. That's probably just a small slip fake there. And there's no rotations on the way yet going to the B side. So this is going to be a four versus two. Going straight through that Molotov. Domster and Devoid in beautiful positions to shut down this push. They both find one kill apiece. Domster coming around now with the P2000. He finds himself another. And uh, it's all down to style with that orb. Uh, doesn't look like he's going to get out alive as Turtle starts to wrap around the back end of Banana. And Devoid's going to get aggressive here. Start pushing him. And he's going to find that orb which uh, he gets. And that will probably go to Panda. Uh, and that's 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 four eight now. APG <laughs> needs, needs to get a lot better than that. Look, um, just looking at what DC did incorrectly there. I think they didn't go in predicting where they would be basically. Well, to a certain extent. Yeah. I saw um, the void sitting on on top of the uh, the cables or the coils, and you know that's a predictable area. Yeah. The DC wasn't very ruthless in that round. I think if they, if they if they maintain to be quite ruthless and aggressive, they do tend to pick up a lot more points. Yeah. Uh, a lot more wins. Definitely. Uh, as, as such. And that's another thing I've noticed about DC as well. When playing energy sports, Ventus and, and Dardo, they never like to play too aggressive. They're, they're, they're almost kind of... Quite a just, passive team. They, you know, the, the, they are very passive. Yeah. But as we see now, Gambit reading up to go to the outside breach, Flash going outside, he's picked his man, there we go, Turtle out of the picture. Nice oh. little spam there from Panda, only picking up one at the moment, and it is a 4 on 3, and the rotation once again, so late from APG, really puts them on the back foot, I mean, what, 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 what more can I say? Well, it's a retake situation time and time again for APG, they're really making it difficult for them.